Hello, and welcome to Research This, a podcast where we do the research and give you the answers. Today, for our first episode, we're going to be talking about a video game you may have heard of called Overwatch. Here today with a guest. Hello. And he's going to be telling us a little bit about Overwatch. So to begin with, can you just tell a little bit about what Overwatch is? Overwatch is a game made by Blizzard Entertainment. It's a team-focused game, so there's different objectives like payload, capture control point. So payload would be delivering a payload or keeping it safe? Yes. There are two sides to the fight. Attack and defense. Attack on a payload map either goes to a control point, captures a control point, and then gets the payload and delivers it to the final point. Or there's already a payload thing there. Try to get past the enemy team that's defending and bring it all the way across the map. And the defense does what defense is supposed to do. Defend each point from the attacking team so that they don't get the payload across the map. On control point, it's very simple. Just attack the control point, capture it. There are two for each control point map. Each map has different ways that you can go as a character. Some characters, like Widowmaker, have mobility options in which they can get across large gaps. So why don't you tell us just a little bit about the different characters in Overwatch and what they can do? There are four different categories of characters. Offense, Defense, Tank, and Support. Offense is basically the damage dealers or the flankers. And what are their names? There are six different characters right now in off. Genji, McCree, Tracer, Reaper, Soldier 76, and Farah. Soon to be, there's going to be a seventh, Sombra, who I'm very excited to see and play around with. Defense, there are about five characters. Bastion, Torbjorn, Widowmaker, Hanzo, and May. Tank, there's Reinhardt, Diva, Roadhog, and Zarya. Support, there's Mercy, Lucio, Zenyatta, and Anna. And a, one more coming up. When you pick each character in that category, you don't need to play your own game. If you're a support, hang around your team. If you're a tank, you know, you gotta be in the front lines, take all the damage, or Roadhog kind of... You, Roadhog isn't really a tank in my eyes. He just can't take a lot of damage. He's sort of offense hero with a bunch of health. Diva is kind of a flanking tank, but can still stay on the front lines. Reinhardt is always in the front lines. And Zarya is an annoying tank to deal with. I don't really like her that much. So the four categories of around 21 or so characters, 22, uh, if you count Sombra coming up soon in the next PTR, so, do you pick just one of these characters to play as for each round? Um, no. In Overwatch, hero switching is a very, very good thing. Because it's a core gameplay in Overwatch to switch heroes. Either after you die or there's the enemy team. One of their teammates dies. They switch to a different character. So, you or another teammate can switch to counter that hero. Personally, I play a lot of Reaper and Ana, and Hanzo, Lucio, Soldier, because I quite like offense. They're very fun to play as, and Reaper is just does a lot of damage, a, like a lot up close, but far away, not so much, because he has shot he has, uh, shotgun. And Ana, I really like, because she has a sleep dart for her left shift, and wherever you're aiming, she fires that, so even if aiming straight on and then you move to a bit, it's gonna follow where you aim. And it puts people to sleep unless they're damaged. If they're damaged, then they'll wake back up. You have to coordinate with your team when you put someone to sleep. Your team will see if the enemy team's, like, Roadhog is asleep, so they don't attack them, so they can all group around and then kill them. So it doesn't have time to use his E to self heal them. Her E ability is a biotic grenade, where it has a radius of, I think, four feet, 
and if you throw it on the ground, any person within that range gets a boost in how much they get healed. They get healed, but if you throw it at the enemy team, they can't be healed no matter what. None of the health packs will work. Their own abilities that heal them won't work. The healers can't heal them. So basically, they're just sitting there damaged and preventing from healing, so you can kind of just wail on them for a bit. Or they're forced to go into cover. So it sounds like teamwork is a key factor in Overwatch. Yes, it is a very key factor in it. You can't, unless you're offense, you should not be uh, going on your own and trying to get all the kills. It's not about that. It's about being a team and winning the objective. But offense heroes can stay on the objective, but someone like Reaper really shouldn't be with the team. He should be off away from the team, causing as much annoyance as he can with his shotguns, which deal a lot of damage up close, so he can sneak up behind his enemies. He's not as stealthy as Sombra might be, who I think will be almost impossible to catch if she uses her abilities right. He can get caught because his left shift is Wraith form and he's invulnerable to damage and he can't fire. He can only move faster than he normally walks. But it's very easy to see so that's how it's balanced. But even if he catches people off guard he can deal tons of damage and if they're like a Roadhog then they're basically dead if they don't catch him in time because even through his self heal you can kill him because he does so much damage and he has a teleport for his E startup is slow but it's just fast enough for you to be able to escape some attacks before dying the teleport is very fast so you go to the place like almost instantly the uh, ending animation is slow as well so the team has time to prepare and plus you're glowing bright red to the enemy team when you're doing it. So you have to be very careful where you use it and not go to obvious spots and constantly check the enemy team and what heroes they have so you know if you can teleport up to a little ledge where a Widowmaker might be able to snipe you. But since they don't have a Widowmaker, you can just safely teleport up there. And do you form, you know, kind of like in World of Warcraft, a guild and you stay with the same players throughout all the games? Or, you know, each round or each game, do you kind of just get thrown in with a bunch of random people? That's sort of how it works. In quick play, you do get thrown into a random assortment of players unless you're in a group with friends. You can form groups with your friends on Battle.net and team up. And you have, can have a group of six. But in a quick play round, you will always stay with the same people unless one of them leaves through every time you finish an objective. But if you leave the game and then uh, click play, quick play again, you'll get thrown in with a random sort of players sometimes. But in competitive, in competitive play, you will always get thrown with random people unless you're in a group with friends. It will never be the same people. You do one round of comp, reload you back into comp, you have to click play, competitive again. Same with play versus AI and the brawl, really. So it doesn't always throw you in with random people. It sometimes does. So what would you say are the most fun aspects of Overwatch? Really everything except May. May is the most annoying hero. She really cannot be countered. It's very difficult to deal with her if she uses her abilities right because she can freeze you and while you're frozen she can use her right click which is kind of a charge up icicle that does a good amount of damage on a headshot. So if you're anyone that has 200 health or lower, even 300 health, you're gonna die because she can freeze you and the freezing does damage and after she freezes you she just fires her icicle at your head and you're gone is there any way to defend against that attack no because once you're frozen you can't do anything <laughs> you're just stuck <laughs> yes 
unless your teammates kind of see that you're frozen and another Mei on your team uses her ice wall to block the enemy Mei from headshotting you so that you can get out from the freeze. Because the freeze lasts long enough for her to headshot you like once or twice if you're a tank, but after that it's, you're not frozen anymore. So while you're frozen, you can't be infinitely frozen with her left click. It just does damage while you're frozen. It's the normal amount of time. And I, I love that because then it'd be annoying to fight her when she can infinitely freeze you with just her left click. He said fun working with new groups of people and kind of seeing how everyone has a different approach to the gameplay. Um, yeah. I mean, each hero calls for like sort of the same play style for each person. Reapers, you know, it's kind of the same thing. But, you know, you can be sort of an offensive reaper, like the category describes. Like, you use your wraith form to just get straight into battle, not flink around. But that's really not a good idea in my eyes, because he only has 200 health. And once you use your wraith form, you can't use it again, and teleport is slow. So it's really hard to do that without getting killed almost instantly if the enemy team has a good team comp and good strategy and stuff. If there are people out there who have not been playing Overwatch but have heard about it and think that it looks interesting, would you say that they could still jump into the game at this point and, and be competitive? Or do you feel like the people who've been playing since the beginning are kind of too far ahead? There are ranks in Overwatch, but that really doesn't matter. It just tells you how much you played the game. But even the most skilled player out there can lose someone that's only been playing the game for like an hour. It's all about how you use your abilities, how you play the hero. Everyone makes mistakes in this game. Even people that are four stars. Because once you reach level 100, like rank 100, you get a star under your name. And it can go up to a lot of stars. So even someone with five stars under their own name and their icon, they can still lose for someone that's rank five and has nothing. And even if you're just getting into it and just heard about it and just buying it, the way Overwatch works in terms of putting you against people is if you're just starting out, it puts you with people who are also just starting out. So you're not overwhelmed. Like, that's most of the time. Sometimes someone that's very far ahead of you can sneak through because servers. But that really doesn't happen that often. But once you reach a certain rank, it kind of puts you against really anyone. But mostly people that are, like, around your rank. So it doesn't really matter when you started. It's going to be a fun time, and you, you could be the best in your team. It's a really fun game for anyone. Alright, and Overwatch is available on Windows PC, PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. Um, you got it off of Steam, correct? No. No, no you Steam? You cannot get Overwatch from Steam. It is a Blizzard Entertainment game, so you have to have a Battle.net account. Uh, go to battle.net and you can buy the game for about $40 but Origins Edition which gives you some new skins for characters it, you can buy that for about 60 I would go for just 40 because it doesn't really matter about the skins for the Origins Edition some of them are cool but there are a bunch of cooler skins in the game already that you can just buy with credits or as you rank up get one loot box for every rank but you can buy loot boxes with money but that's about the only uh in-app purchases that there are all right well it sounds amazing thank you so much and please tune in next time bye bye